Hey, welcome to the Workbench Live Edit. So yesterday I had a chance to put this together. This is the GPI or GPI case where you use a Raspberry Pi Zero W. You insert that into this little cartridge here. You plug it into this device and you have a handheld gaming device. That was about a two hour long retro project on the workbench over here. I have consolidated that down to putting everything together to get to a first startup for this device. That took it down to about 30 minutes. So if you'd like to see the entire two hour block, there is a link down below where you can watch the whole thing. It's exciting stuff, let me tell you. But you may wanna go through because I do spend more time at the end of that video where I already have this started up, going through some more specifics. And also hang around because at the end of this, I'm gonna give you a few thoughts about my first impressions of this device. So watch me get this thing all put together fired up for the first time. Then at the end, I'll give you some thoughts. Don't forget to hit subscribe below because I'll be doing some other retro projects and getting those online in the future as well. But for now, let's look at this edited version of the two hour live Workbench Live for the G Pi case. Okay, well, I'm doing something I've not done before. I'm actually recording from my workbench in my wonderful COVID area and uh, today I'm going to work on a retro project. We're going to be looking at the Retro Flag GPIA case. This little guy right here. It's reminiscent of a Game Boy but you can install uh, emulator software on there to make it a retro gaming device and a lot of people online do use this case but they use it in a way that uh, they're trying to emulate many game systems such as Nintendo, um, Sega, NES systems, uh, even PlayStation systems with some of the more modern games. What I want to do is really look at it from a really retro computing and retro gaming and only install things that are 8-bit. So I'm going to be focused on the, uh, let's see, the Atari 2600, the Commodore, the, the uh, Atari computers, the Sinclair computers, and I want to focus on those and not take a real heavy gaming uh, em emphasis on the device, but how can we use this device to experience some retro computing? So this is a live uh, recording. So I have my workbench over here. Let me show you what I have set up. This is the workbench right here. So as you as you can see, this has not even been opened and been opened up yet. So we'll be going uh, right from here all the way through, and hopefully by the end of this recording, we'll have something that resembles a handheld retro gaming device. I do have everything up on the screen here as well that we're going to need. I have my notes. I have already pre-downloaded all the files and I have Etcher, which is the way that we're going to burn our SD card to put on the emulator software. So for this project, really all you need are a few things. We need the, uh, the RetroFlag GPI uh, case, which I've shown you. We need a Raspberry Pi Zero. The Raspberry Pi Zero will go into the case and we'll show you how to do that hopefully. You'll need at least a 32 gig, although I'm, you probably don't even need that for the type of project I'm doing. Since I'm doing retro gaming, all of these games are very, very small. So I am uh, going to be doing or using just a, a 16 gigabyte card that came with the Raspberry Pi Zero. And I have not shown you that, but this is the Raspberry Pi Zero right here. So we'll be preparing that. So along the way, we'll be burning the uh, image that we're going to use for the retro gaming. And in this case, we're going to use the Super Retro Pi. And there is a Super Retro Pi group on Facebook that you can go search for. And uh, once I'm done with this, I will probably compact this entire live video down to some kind of manageable chunk that you can watch at your own leisure if you want, along with the live. I'll keep that up too in case you wanna see the step-by-step. But I also have lots of links below in the notes. And I will also, uh, more than likely, and I've already started preparing it, you can see in front of you on the desktop version, I've really already started to create a blog post, which I'll have all the links and everything you need. So don't worry about any of that right now. You can just kind of uh, watch along. And uh, I'm not sure if anybody is actually gonna bounce in on my live feed. I did post it on Twitter, we'll see. If nothing else, uh, it's just a way for me to capture what I did today and uh, hopefully some of the, the fun that I had and the frustrations along the way, I'm sure. I'm sure that's gonna happen too. I'm sure there'll be plenty of frustrations as we go and you'll see those. So I uh, think we will get started. So let's go ahead and go over to the workbench. And uh, the workbench is down below here. You can uh, follow along here and uh, remember the chat room is open. Uh, hey, there's a guy in there. Let me say hello. 
Uh, we are recording, so this is interesting. This is my first chat. Hey, uh, you are my first live chat. Uh, 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 what contributor? Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so the, the there is somebody in the chat. There is a uh, name Raul Duran Bar Barrist. I know I've killed it, Barristoff. So thanks for joining us uh, as we go through here. We just started, and we're going to open up the case on this uh, retro flag Raspberry Pi case. So let's go ahead and get into this. Let me get, uh, and uh, I talk a lot, so uh, get used to me just rambling pretty much about nothing. But if you're following along, that's it's great. Uh, Raul, I really appreciate you joining us. Uh, that's really cool to have you on board and uh, share with all your friends that we're doing a project live if you want. Um, all right, so we're going to get this out of its cellophane wrapping here. This particular set that I ordered came with a few extra features. Um, we'll go ahead and I'll just show you the box here first. You can see the box. Um, won't go too much into it. Um, so we've got the GPI case uh, here. We've got on the back, it tells everything that's included. We've got a cable in here. We can change our contrast. Wow, great to know we can change our contrast. We have power, micro SD, volume, phones, and we'll be taking a look at all that as we go in. It, uh, it is well rated on Amazon. If you, don't, if you haven't seen this on Amazon, go take a look at the links and you'll see that. Uh, people love this little device, so we're looking forward to it. This one comes with a little case. Uh, the package I bought. There are various versions that you can get online. Uh, actually, a nice little case. Uh, this whole kit right here, just the case and uh, the retro flag, uh, GP, GPI, I guess is what they call the GPI case, is about 70, 80 bucks depending on when you buy it. And uh, I just got it a few days ago and it was about $70. I think it was 77 actually. So we're going to go ahead and set the case aside. We're not going to need that for a while. So uh, let's go ahead and pull the things out of the box here. The, the other things that I have uh, that I have not mentioned that I'm going to be using for the project, of course, I do have the Raspberry Pi W or Zero, Raspberry Pi Zero W, long name. I also have a heat sink, but I do not know if we're going to be able to use that. I don't know if it'll fit in the case. We'll take a look at that, though. I, of course, I have my SD card adapter so that we can burn the image. And I have the SanDisk uh, 16 gigabyte card that came with this uh, Raspberry Pi Zero kit that I bought as well. Now there's some things that came with the kit I'm not going to need for this project, for instance this nice case, but it was a really good deal for this kit. It's about $25 for all of this, including the 16 gig card. So that's that's not a bad value for what we're getting. Let's see, inside here we have another nice cloth case. This is this is pretty nice. It's a, it's a felt case. I'm going to go ahead and set that aside with our other case over here. Also, we have um, this in here, which I have no earthly idea what that is. It is double-sided tape. Looks like maybe this is potentially a heat sink. We'll find out when we look at our instructions. This one comes with this really cool little cool uh, keychain, and uh, it's also interesting because not every package you purchase, you get a cute little keychain. How about that? Keychain for all your retro gaming goodness. Very sweet. We do have our instruction manuals, which we will follow closely, so we'll keep that out here. And one more item. Oh, you know, I set out my screwdriver because I thought we were going to need one. However, the kit also includes its own handy-dandy screwdriver. So that's very nice of them to actually include the screwdriver. You need not bad. What else do we have? Something else in here. We have our screws in here for the project going to leave those in here because sure enough as soon as I don't do that I am going to lose those and then we ha also have our USB no our power cable uh, so it is a USB but it's this mini plug you can see that there so I assume this will go into the power supply on the case you ha do have to provide your own power uh, I have power on the workbench right over here so we can do that a little bit later that's easy enough okay this is the part we've all been waiting for. Here's the case. It is very reminiscent of the Game Boy uh, to include even, uh, uh, I believe, the cartridge pulls out. And I believe what we'll find is in here is where we're going to put our Raspberry Pi Zero. But that is, uh, it's really, I kind of like that design where it mimics 
the old cartridge, which I guess means if you had a couple of these, you could uh, swap this out with a different Raspberry Pi Zero and an image, and you could have multiple configuration images and just pop those in and pop those out. So that is a pretty interesting design. Uh, on the back here, it uses three uh, AA batteries, and I have some rechargeables over here that will throw that in there. On the back, there are two buttons back here. A lot of people may not know, know that. Those are the shoulder buttons. So when you're gaming, if you need shoulder buttons, that's where those are going to be. Here's our power adapter. Here is our contrast. We'll take a look at that once we get it fired up. We have our regular gaming. And this, let me get some of this stuff off of here. This feels really nice. It's, it feels really well made. Uh, it's not something somebody just 3D printed and shipped. This is a manufactured product. We've got select, start, all the requisite buttons. Hopefully there's a speaker there. Place for a headphone jack if we need that. We have our volume and uh, let's go ahead and peel off the screen protector. It's over now. I am probably going to scratch up the screen now because that's what always happens to me. Okay, probably should have waited on that, but we'll go ahead and take it off. So again, very, very nice, very well made. Looking forward to, to kind of messing around with this once it's live. Okay, so that's ready. Let's put that over here. All right, let's go through our instructions here. We are going to, oh, I, I was going to share with you the uh, power. The power does come in right here, and it is just a standard power plug. It's, just, it, it's interesting uh, that they didn't use like a micro USB, uh, but uh, in all actuality, my preference is this kind of plug. However, if you lose this cable, um, you're done except for battery or you're going to have to buy a new cable. So I guess that is the negative that it's not a proprietary or that it, uh, it's a negative that it is proprietary because you can't use a micro USB. So, okay, let's set that aside over here and let's go see what we have. Step one, install safe shutdown script. So what we're going to do on this one, let me go ahead and bounce on over to the, the desktop now. What we're going to do is uh, we are using the Super Retro Pi image. And what's nice is there are some scripts that you are supposed to install on the image that you place on the device. Uh, but if you search around, you can find um, emulators, software, and, and uh, installations that already have done all that for you. So I did. It is the RetroPie Facebook group. Let me just go ahead and show this to you here. And here's the group that you're going to want right here. Super RetroPie, and they have prepared a distribution for us to put on the uh, micro SD card that includes all the scripts that these instructions right here are asking you to do, which is very nice. So I've already downloaded it here. The uh, first thing we need to do is, you can see it right here, is we need to unzip that. Um, actually, I'm not so sure we do have to unzip it now that I think about it, uh, because I use Bolana Etcher. Etcher may be able to go ahead and create that image right from the zip file. Let's go ahead and see if we can do that. So let me go back to my workbench here. What we're going to do is take our SD card here. Okay, and uh, I'm going to pull this. I will not need the adapter for this one. So let's go ahead and put this in here. And then I have a, 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 a an extension for my USB cable. So I'm going to put that in there. Now let's go back to our desktop over here. And we're just going to see if I can drag the zip. A lot of times Bolana Etcher uh, will just let me drag a zip and burn directly to. So let's see what happens it says cannot so i'm going to have to unzip this so let's go ahead and extract here and that's not good because that means that the download is probably corrupted let's see and i thought i had everything prepared which means i'm probably gonna have to re-download that now i'm gonna go ahead the last time i did this i downloaded the whole thing as a zip i'm, I'm going to well i really want both of these files so let me go ahead and download this one as a standard download. Let's not have it and uh, allow. And this is going to take a while. So let me go ahead and I want to get this one downloaded too as a standard download. So here's our Raspberry Pi Zero. This is the 0W, which means it has Wi-Fi. There are versions that are just 
the Raspberry Pi Zero without Wi-Fi. This one includes Wi-Fi and you're going to want Wi-Fi because you are going to want to connect uh, via SSH to put your game cartridges or your ROMs on here. This um, WPA Supplicant Conf uh, is something that we have to do something with. Uh, we'll take a look at that here in a minute and see what. But now we should be able to come over here, drag this image file over on here, and there we go. We've got it. Now let's select our target. You have to be very careful with this. Uh, if you do this the wrong way, you could uh, overwrite something you did not want to overwrite. For instance, this backup file, which is 750 gigs, it's a large drive. It obviously is not what we want to use. If I did select that, it would write over everything on that external drive. So uh, with Bolana Etcher, we're going to choose this mass storage device, which is about 16 gigs, which is perfect. That's what we saw. We're going to continue and then we get to just watch it flash. Let's go back to our workbench here. And uh, we do know that what we what we're going to be doing is putting the let me see if it's in our instructions. Yes, uh, first of all, we've already done the safe shutdown scripts. OK, so we'll, we'll go ahead and start working on the install here. I we definitely can do that. So let's go ahead and pull out as uh, for those of you that just joined uh, again. What's really cool about this is your Raspberry Pi sits into this what looks like an old um, Game Boy cartridge and once we have that installed we're going to plug that in and it's going to connect it to the rest of this device so in theory you could have multiple Raspberry Pis running multiple images and just like a, a cartridge you could plug that in and give new capability to this device I may be playing with that I've already got some ideas for how that might work so let's go ahead and start working on getting the Raspberry Pi zero into this device now the screws are already have already been included. They're not on here, which I, I have to say I appreciate that I don't have to pull the screws out. So I think if I look at this, this should just be a pop off and I'm going to do this very lightly and easily so I don't break anything. There we go. So there's the back. We'll put that over here to the side. Oh, we lost a viewer. Man, we're down again. Oh, well. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and then it says, uh, don't insert screws before put the shelf to. Wow, some of the, just a little language uh, uh, assistance would be helpful. Don't insert screws before put the shelf to. I'm not sure what that means. I guess we'll follow along in the instructions. Uh, this does have these, instead of normally what you would do, it's going to be using the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi. I, I probably didn't mention that. It's going to be using these pins. Normally, we would insert a header here and we'd have to solder all those in. I do have a header, but what's nice is this package includes, I think they're called pogo pins that are just going to set in there. So it's a solder free operation, which uh, is actually pretty nice that we don't have to do any soldering. So let's go ahead and look at our instructions here. Um, it says this is a cover that can come out. Oh, there you go. So right here is a cover that comes in and out. Uh, I assume that, it, yes, that's for the micro SD. So that comes in and out. We'll go ahead and pull that out for now. Okay, so here's shelf. Oh, I see what they're trying to do. They're trying to help you align this with, when they say shelf, it's actually which part of the uh, cartridge, so to speak, that we're talking about. Okay, so we'll put those down here. All right, so once we do that, we grab our Raspberry Pi and I'll take all the credit for the views. You got it, man. You, you get all the credit uh, and you're the only one talking. So you get the gold star for the day. Thank you. Hey, I really appreciate you being here. It, it's amazing. It does add a little bit of interactivity and every once in a while I have to remember you're here and I need to go over there and look at the chat room, which is uh, right over here for me. I'm looking over here at the chat. Uh, so that's fun. Okay, let's see. We have going back to this. Make sure I have everything aligned. Looks like I do. So then the next thing we do is take this and we are going to plug this in. If I'm reading this right, this would make sense to the second. Okay, so this is this is critical. You got you have two USB ports, but you got to make sure and plug it into the second one right there. So let's go ahead and make sure I do that. Get that up here so you can see that. So I'm going to push that in. So that was pretty painless. So now that's in. 
Um, now the next thing is it should, with the pogo pins, okay, so we're gonna fold it over and then we're going to align these pogo pins. So they're touching. So th there's, no, there's no click, they don't really click in there. They're just gonna, it's just gonna be a touching kind of situation where they're making contact. See that right there? And that's how they're gonna stay. Okay, so now that we do that, we take our shelf one. Shelf one, I think that is this one, yes. Shelf one, you gotta have to flip this in the right direction. So far, so good. So far, so good. And then we're going to slide this onto, you can see these posts right here. So those posts are gonna slide into those holes. And that is going to ensure alignment of our pogo pins. And it does. Hey, that's, that is pretty slick. That was easier than I thought it was going to be. Although this still moves. Oh, there we go. Get those in there. Now, when we, when we put the back on in the screws, that should take care of everything. So what I'm going to do now is let me make sure I'm doing this right. Yep. Put on the back shelf here. And now you just got to kind of hold this so it doesn't flop out on you. And that clicks in. So even without the screws, that all clicked together into a single unit. That's pretty nice. Uh, and it's holding it on there because my concern was as I was putting on that on there, this would pop off. But it does not seem to be doing that. Okay. So now we need our screws. I'm assuming that's what we're doing. Yes. So now we need our screws next. And these are those really tiny screws. But luckily, again, for those of you just joining us, a free screwdriver is included with the kit. How about that? That's awesome. Let me move my microphone over here a little bit for you so you can hear me. Uh, let's see, anybody new? Nope, still, still it. Only one other additional person who's who's lurking on us roll doesn't want to come in and chat with us. I don't know who it is, but um, hopefully they're, they may be in a situation where they probably shouldn't be chatting at, <clears throat> chatting at work. So we, we'll, we'll cut them some slack if they're watching. Um, isn't this exciting? Man, this is, this, is, this is what YouTube Live is all about. Just watching some guy in his basement, not my mother's, in a basement putting something together. This is, you couldn't find this on any television station when I was growing up. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this screw in here. This is the perfect screwdriver, I have to admit. I think this is, this is definitely gonna work better than the one I had. Okay, I'm not going to tighten it too tight because I do not want to mess these up. Okay, since I know how this works, I'm going to go ahead and drop the other three in there. Good news is, about the time we get done with this, our image should be done. It is, let me show you what's happening right now with our image. With our image, it is validating. So we're at 60% validation. So once that's done validating, we should have a good image. So let's go ahead and go back to our workbench here so you can watch me put some screws in. I'm sure that's exciting too to watch. I'll tell you, the, uh, the non-solder installation of this is definitely a plus because if you are somebody who just kind of wants to learn about Raspberry Pis and tinker and play, this is a great way to do it. Uh, Raspberry Pi Zeros, I think I mentioned, they're about $25 in the kit I purchased. Uh, in some ways, the kit I purchased, which I will have a link later if you're interested, is cheaper than a Raspberry Pi alone. So there we go. That's that's it. We've got the Raspberry Pi W uh, into the actual cartridge that's going to go in the back here. Now, I, I assume it's okay to go ahead and that's probably what they're going to say next. Yes. So let's see, we've done everything, we've done everything. These are some pretty basic instructions though. They don't tell you a whole lot. Um, there is a um, PDF that comes with, uh, that you can download where you can get some more information. Okay, so now we'll take that cartridge and we're just gonna push that back in and that's on there. And look, I, I knew I was gonna get that dirty. Let me go ahead and wipe that off. I've got a cloth here somewhere. Okay, so let's go back and see how we are doing with our card that we flashed with the Super Retro Boy Revision E. Looks like it's done. Uh, we should go ahead and eject that. So I'm going to 
find the retro pie here. Um, now, actually I say that before we do that, I think there is some setup that we need to do uh, before we get started and we need to drop that information over to this card. It was called the WPA Supplicant Conf. So let me open that up right here. Uh, I'm not gonna open it. Yeah, we'll open it in code. That'll work out perfectly. That's a lightweight text editor. And this is the information for your network uh, that you're supposed to drop over. So you can see your SSID, your password here. Uh, and then what you do is you take that and you drop it over to the boot sector over here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in some information. I'm going to save this and uh, put it right back. So I am not going to broadcast what my Wi-Fi information is. So I have a nice handy dandy screen for you while I work on this. So I'll be right back. I think I can take my bug zapping screen off and get you back to here. So what I've got is this WPA supplicant.com file that I'm going to drag over to the uh, SD card. So let's see if I can get that done here. Uh, here's the file. I'm just going to do a copy and then we'll come over to the boot partition right here and we are going to I believe it's the boot partition I'm pretty sure yes it's the boot partition and then we are going to paste and uh, that should be on there now let's go ahead and see if we can find it you can see it right there so that's good and uh, now that we've done that now we can eject the SD card from this computer so let's go ahead and do that make sure I get the right one because if I did this one or this one, that would be bad. So we'll hit this one and that has done that. All right, let's go back to our workbench. So let me go ahead and eject this. We're going to go ahead and pull the micro SD card out of here. And then we are going to insert it. And uh, boy, I, I believe this way. So the pins point towards the back. So I'm going to go ahead and push that in. I'm going to use this flathead just to make sure it's in there. Okay, it is. And then I'm going to go ahead and put my plug back on, which, guess what, guys? I should have put that back on before I put this in. So this should not come off. You should go ahead and put that on. Then when it puts on, then you can open it up and pull it out. So I have made that mistake. I am not going to do that here and fix that. I will fix that afterwards. So I'll just set that aside. Take our adapter and we're going to plug it in. Everything looks good. And we're going to plug it into my power source over here. It is plugged in. Now, so we're going to apply power. I have retro flag. Look at me. So far, so good. Ooh, nice sound. Super retro boy. And that's the process I took to get this little device working. As you can see, I do have it running here. I have the uh, couple of emulators on here. I have the Atari 2600 emulated. I have the last played, the favorites, the Sinclair ZX Spectrum or ZX Spectrum. I have the Scum VM emulator on here for Scum VM games. Uh, here's our RetroPie options. There it does come with some ports on here. You get Doom and Duke Nukem are included with the um, which package am I using? The Super Retro Boy. So that is included. I do have a MAME or MAMI, who, depending on who you are, which simulates all those great retro arcade games on here. I did install the Vice emulator, which is not a part of the default Super Retro Boy. There are some issues with that. I'm still working through, but I, I, I'm close. I've almost got some great Commodore gaming on here. And of course, the Atari 2600. And uh, I believe I have the 5200 and the 7800. So those are all emulated on here. First impressions are this is a really nice device. Uh, it's it's uh, really solid. It's well built, uh, like the build quality. Really, the only hiccups are in the Super Retro Boy image that you install on the SD card. There are some limitations. It does not come with the systems that I had hoped to emulate on this device. Again, I'm slowly putting those on there. I also have posted a few questions on the uh, Facebook page for Super Retro Boy asking for some advice. Uh, but overall, I think the system works well. It is a little slow to boot, and I do mention that in my uh, live video. 
It also will burn through some battery. Let me tell you, I, I uh, was using some batteries that were brand new within an hour. They, I will admit they were some cheap batteries, but within an hour, this was blinking and powering down. The other things to uh, note about this device and the Super Retro Boy uh, image is that what's nice is it does come with this shutdown button. So red, Raspberry Pis are notorious. If you just unplug the power, you'll corrupt the SD card. So what will happen is if I throw this device, and I'm going to do that for you now, it will start a shutdown process on the device for you automatically and take it all the way down to shutdown. And that is a very nice feature because you do not just want to cut the power to the device. So I really appreciate that the guys or folks or gals or whoever over at Super Retro Boy added that. And then once this fades out, as you see it here, we will know that it is completely turned off. And then we will just pull the switch all the way back and cut power to the device. And so it works pretty easily. It does have the contrast, which is really a brightness control. It's not really a contrast. And it does have volume. The sound on this is, a, it's very good. It's as good as a, an old Game Boy. It does say stereo, which I'm pretty sure it's not stereo. There's only a single speaker in here. Now it would be stereo probably with the headphones. Headphones works. So uh, I didn't really think to notice if it was stereo or not. But other than that, this is really a cool package. Again, this was about 70 bucks. You get a Retro Pi, or I'm sorry, Raspberry Pi Zero W for about another 25. So for about $100, you've got a device that will run all kinds of great retro games. If you are interested beyond retro, this will go up to roughly a PlayStation 1 2D games. Uh, if you read online, you'll hear that there are some struggles with this device. Uh, and that's because of the Raspberry Pi W trying to run 3D games from the PlayStation 1. But 2D games should work fine. I didn't go to anything beyond what is kind of classic for me, 8-bit. Uh, so those things that I mentioned. So I am going to explore again, trying to get the Commodore uh, Vice emulator working, Atari 2600, which you saw, 7800, 5200. Uh, I also installed, but have not tried yet, the Atari computers, the 400, 800. So that's going to be on here as well. And you saw the Timex Sinclair, and I'll be looking at some other ones. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed uh, a lot of video. Again, the edited version, which you're watching here. But also don't forget to check out the live if you want to see just two hours worth of some guy YouTube living, uh, uh, streaming online live, uh, one or two guests. Thanks to Raul for keeping me company during that, uh, who is a longtime Pixel Power podcast listener, so I appreciate that. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed that. If you did, uh, let me know in the comments below. Oh, and don't forget, there's a companion website at stephencombs.com, which will have additional links and additional information about this device. So make sure you check out that link. So thanks for watching this video and the live one. 